Hello and welcome to this episode of the Whole Health of Rob Carney podcast. I'm your host, Rob Carney. This is a platform to connect with and share the stories of health professionals, entrepreneurs, and personal development leaders who are making an impact in the world. So today I'm joined by my guest, Eileen Durfee. And Eileen is a former nuclear power plant engineer, inspector, auditor, and real estate developer who became sick due to chemical exposure. She suffered from chronic pain, allergies, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, and a lack of energy to live a fulfilling life. These symptoms are the result of her body not eliminating the toxins to which she was so regularly exposed. She tried a variety of medications, diets, therapies, and more to help recover her health. On a quest to heal her body, she discovered what solutions worked and wanted to use her knowledge and experience to help others. Her journey to overcome her own health issues led her to become an inventor and entrepreneur with seven utility and three design patents. She founded Creatrix Solutions to create and distribute natural healing products worldwide. Eileen has an understanding of toxic home and work environments and knows firsthand what it is like to suffer as the result. Her experience continues to motivate her to create the best possible health solutions to protect family, friends, and consumers from our toxic world. So in this episode, you may hear my curiosity come out about working on nuclear power plants. We talk about oxygen, you know, having clean air in our homes, and many other things on the topic of healthy living. So this is a super fun episode. Um, We do have a couple little moments of Zoom uh, clunkiness, you can call it, which does happen in this digital world. Um, So don't mind that. There's just a few moments in there mixed in, but I think we got it pretty smoothed out. And I'm looking forward to having you check this out and stay tuned to the ends where you can learn more about how to connect with Eileen. You can learn more about the products, where to find those, and also you can learn more about my favorite greens product that I like to share myself. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're in the right place. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you listen to, we'd love to have you leave a review when you got a moment to share this with the world and get these messages out there. And want to also just mention that if you are not watching this on YouTube, I do release these on YouTube first every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then they go into the other platforms shortly thereafter. I also release new videos every Thursday on YouTube, so please do check that out. Subscribe to see some exclusive content only on YouTube. And without further ado, here we go. Here's Eileen. Eileen, welcome to the show, my friend. It's great to have you here, and I'm excited to dive into some really fun topics today. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, as we just described, you know, I don't get the opportunity to talk to a nuclear engineer or too often. So I want to just kind of start there just to pique my own interest, because obviously you've worked as a nuclear power plant engineer, as we were discussing in the introduction here. But I kind of want to hear a little bit about that experience, because I think that's something that for a lot of people is a big mystery. I think people kind of hear about nuclear, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. I feel like people don't really know what actually goes on there. Um, So I'd love to kind of know, you know, what was your experience working in a nuclear power plant and can that be done sustainably? Because I feel like we often hear the bad sides of nuclear without always talking about the good sides. Well, I'm from Kennewick, Washington. And if a lot of people don't know, this is where, you know, within 20 miles, they built the bomb. And unfortunately, when they did that, they just left a mess. This is the most contaminated place in the Western hemisphere of the world. And of course, the race is to contain the nuclear waste. You know, originally single shell tanks, now double shell tanks are leaking. Um, They're trying to glassify the waste. They've got multiple pumps along the river, over a hundred gallons a minute each, pumping up groundwater and purifying it before it hits the Columbia River. This is a drastic health problem here. So I grew up here and of course, they had not only all the abandoned plants from making the bomb and all the plutonium and things like that, but they had the Hanford Reservation where the whoops, they call it, where you know they mothballed all those nuclear power plants. And so I, I, 
after working for Rockwell Hanford out there, um, <clears throat> I started job shopping uh, where we were working at plants that were under construction. Okay, so there was a lot of design and inspection and things like that. And my specialty was quality assurance engineering. And I worked in Florida, California, Kansas, Texas, Illinois. And I worked a broad range of disciplines from everything from pipe supports to hangers to instrumentation, you know, to all this, this equipment. And um, one of the things people don't realize is these nuclear power plants are so overbuilt for like uh, earthquakes and all these scenarios. So when you put, you know, a location in, you know, there's tolerances and then everything runs into each other. And so then you have to have design work changes and everything like that. I mean, when I worked in California at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, it was just like, if you rejected something as an inspector, your car would be blown up. Or, I mean, it was like the craft ran wild. It was a time where, you know, if you were a woman and you worked in the field, you know, talk about harassment. It, it was horrible, you know, and you had to be 10 times as good as any man at all, you know, to do anything. And uh, the last uh, nuclear job that I worked at was at Comanche Peak where, you know, did statistical analysis and, you know, inspections weren't done like they were supposed to. So they would take populations of like every anchor bolt installed, <laughs> you know, every piece installed. And if any item failed within that population, then they'd have to do a total rework and, and things like that. And, you know, <clears throat> You know, I just really poured in to the paperwork and things like that. And, you know, I, I found that, you know, when you calibrate something, you're supposed to use a, for the depth with an ultrasonic device. You know, if you're going to measure something that's supposed to be two inches long, you got to calibrate it to two inch block. Every single ultrasonic test ever performed at this nuclear power plant had not been calibrated right. So it's like, here, I write this up and they, but they were like, that plant was great at wanting to do everything right, fix everything. And uh, the best nuclear power plant that I ever worked at was uh, in Kansas, New Strawn, Wolf Creek. They actually now are setting records for maintenance and all kinds of things. Uh, there really needs to be a change in the construction you know, where you have small teams that go out and solve some of the problems because these contractors, they were making cost plus 10. So, I mean, some, some of these were so crooked, like at the, in Washington state, they would like tear out, the night shift would tear out what the day crew put in. And it was just like cost overruns, cost overruns. Yeah, but as far as, uh, nuclear power plants, there's no standardized design. There's bo boiling water reactors, there's SNUPs, uh, closed loop reactors. And, you know, obviously the older boiling water reactors have more potential, you know, for problems. Um, there's just a lot of design things, you know, that we learned from Fukushima with these spent rods, you know, and different stuff like that. Obviously there has got to be, you know, some improvement. And now there's designs of really small compact nuclear power plant stations that maybe only supply power for a whole city that are really, you know, a, a leapfrog and evolution for safety you know, but people don't realize that every single nuclear power plant inside the containment dome, there's a pressure relief valve that's meant to release radiation. And, you know, there's just a lot of things in here in these designs that, I mean, if we got rid of every nuclear power plant, 
you know, let me, let me tell you, wind and solar just aren't going to give us what we need. Right. You know, and, and now a lot of places, you know, like Germany's almost closed down every nuclear power plant, but what are they doing now? They're firing up coal fire plants to feed the electric vehicles. Right. So, I mean, there has to, there has to be a balance here. And, and I think the pendulum swung way too far because yeah, Fukushima, you know, that those issues need to be addressed at any, you know, nuclear power plant along, you know, dangerous waters and, and things like that. And they need to be doing something different with the spent fuel rods than what they are. But all in all, it is pretty darn safe as far as emissions, um, as far as, you know, the safety shutdowns and, and the valves and the redundancy of systems is unbelievable. I mean, that's why they're so expensive to build. So I would, I would be a proponent in favor of doing the smaller sealed units that the safety, I mean, they've been doing it in other countries now for quite a while, hmm. that that would really uh, be helpful. But I, I don't think it's helpful when you consider where you have to bury the windmill blades and right. you know all the different costs and the subsidies that went into it and they're just not generating the megawatts you know of power that we need and i think individual homeowners should be getting into you know solar panels and different things but then we have waste disposal on the solar panel problems you know right. it's just really hard to have the perfect solution i mean i really like the fourth phase of water and I'd like to see some research gone into that because Dr. Gerald Pollack found out that you can take water and put a negative and positive electrode in there and shine 3000 nanometers of light on there and it'll generate more power than it took to shine the 3000 nanometers of light on the water mm. and to store energy in water. I think that there's going to be some inventions that come out that are going to really take us out of this quandary that we're in right now for sure and you know i think that like you mentioned with the solar it, it's a great step in the right direction but for me anytime we're dependent on one thing i'm always a little skeptical because what if that one thing now doesn't work <laughs> or, or some bad players get control over that one electrical grid unit that we're creating <laughs> Then what happens? Then what happens if we monopolize the entire electrical circuits and now it costs, you know, a thousand bucks to just heat your home or, you know, use your electricity every month. So I think that anytime we get into one size fits all it becomes a very slippery slope. And so, you know, I think that there's obviously we hear the horror stories of nuclear, but you know, the more I learn about, it, I think there's also a lot of, a lot of potential in there. And I think since these Fukushima's and these other, you know, nuclear waste projects we've had essentially is we've made a lot of improvement and so now it's a matter of can we use this new technology to find a balance that we're not so dependent on one side and not utilizing the other and so you know obviously for you saying that you are a proponent of you know smaller scale nuclear or smaller operations of nuclear but you've had some side effects of working at a nuclear power plant. I'm, I'm curious as to how those two pieces interact. Is it just the fact that the one you were on wasn't sustainable? And I'm also curious, were other people working at the same plant getting sick as well? Well, you know, when you're an inspector and you're in the field, or if you're an engineer and you're checking on stuff, you're around welding fumes, you're around chemicals. And back then we don't have the standards now that we do where people are wearing hoods and having fresh air pumped in. This is back when, who cares almost, you know, let's get the job done. And so there's a lot less occupational exposure than when I was out there, you know, so a lot of the construction type exposure has been eliminated you know i mean in, in washington state i mean when my mom was here they were releasing radioactivity in the air just straight in the air and it's like here we have more thyroid disease than anywhere in the world you know and also underactive thyroid 
you know, cause it's like, then, you know, your parents, you know, so then you're born with, you know, weaker thyroid and all of that. And so it's, it's occupational exposure nowadays, you know, there's a lot more regulations, you know, protecting that. But back then, you know, I mean, it's like, I grew up, my dad had a motorcycle shop and that's when we had leaded gasoline. And I remember all the exhaust fumes in the repair shop. I used to think it smelled good, you know? And I mean, just so think of all the lead, right. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, we've come a long way. For sure. But as far as nuclear, you know, there's just a lot of different chemicals that they use in piping systems that are pumped to do this, to neutralize is that, you know, and everything like that. And so when you're out there in construction and doing inspections, when there wasn't like odor control, when there wasn't, you know, that, that kind of thing in place, you know, you're going to have the exposure just during construction of building it, not of it operating. Gotcha. You know, so as far as the operating portion, you know, there's a lot of things that have to be maintained and changed and there's risk for that, you know, but there's protective equipment now. So, I mean, I still wouldn't, I didn't want to be an inspector in a hot nuclear power plant and wear my dosimeter and go in and get my <laughs> dose of radiation, you know, so I mainly worked, you know, other than the, the mess mm. out there that was created with the bomb. You know, I work with the effluent control group. So our job was actually identifying all the toxic waste that was created. And I mean, literally there were train tunnels where we had records, unclassified, of course, that, you know, they were just storing uranium in cardboard boxes. I mean, so now they build robots to go in, you know, and, and you know, do different things. Uh, but yeah, today is a whole different ball game than, than our history. Cool. Well, you're talking about, you know, toxic chemicals, breathing these things in. I know a topic that you're very interested in, I'm very interested in, is that of oxygen and, and air quality in general. Um, so I'd love to just kind of have you dive into, you know, your, how you keep your house and wherever you go, how you keep that high quality air going, how you build a holistic home. And just the, the little oxygen miracle, I think, is what you called it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our single most impactful exposure to anything is what we breathe. Because we do that more than anything. We do that more than we drink, you know, more than we're touching things. You know, we have all these pathways to get good things into our body, like oxygen and negative ions versus toxins. I mean, it's common knowledge, the EPA says that indoor air is three to five times more toxic than outdoor air. And part of the problem with our conditioned living spaces that we have are heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. They have ductwork, you know, they have an intake, they suck the air, they circulate air through the house, which, you know, the EPA says that if you can increase air circulation, you can decrease respiratory distress from the contaminants, you know, within the home. But part of that recirculation strips the air of negative ions. And people don't realize that our body has this threshold of a minimum amount of negative ions that it needs to function. Just like we have a minimum amount that we need of oxygen, we have a minimum amount we need of water for our bodies to function. And Eileen, real quick, can you just tell people what negative ions are and how those work for anybody that's not familiar? Sure. Well, in nature, there's always positive and negative. And so there's invisible particles, you know, that you see in the air and there's negative ones and they attract the harmful positive ions. And it's nature's way of cleaning up outdoors and weather affects that you're going to have more negative ions um you know after a rainstorm you, you know that fresh smell also has you know oxygen in it and things like that and it's just nature's cleanser but you know like our computer screen it's emitting poisonous positive ions 
you know, and if we don't have a certain amount of negative ions per cubic centimeter, that's the size of a sugar cube that we're inhaling, our body is going to be fatigued. We could have headaches, you know, so somebody who's like indoors, you know, especially with COVID now, more people have been indoors. And then, you know, the formaldehydes and the benzenes and ammonias and all the stuff emitting off of our furniture, our draperies, our carpets, and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, you can have all kinds of symptoms and not even realize that. You can go on the Health and Human Services website and look up all these health conditions that are associated with contaminated air. I mean, I just read a study from cities where people were inhaling more contaminants in their air just because of the smog and you know traveling in and out of the city, they found out that city dwellers have more of the bad kind of fat, you know, than someone who's not breathing that. So the air can be affecting your body composition, your overall health, you know, a lot of things. And so early on, because I used to be allergic to everything. And I mean, if somebody had cologne on or some smell of a soap or anything like that, I mean, my lungs would begin to close up. I had to have an EpiPen. I was allergic to every food. I had to like eat a food and wait 72 hours before I could eat it again because I would just become allergic to everything I ate you know, until I found out about leaky gut and what was really going on there to be able to heal myself of the allergies. But I learned, you know, before you could go to the grocery store and buy either, I don't know, seventh generation or granny's old soap or, you know, all of these non-toxic brands now that you could go and buy. I mean, I had to come up with my own, you know, making different things and using, you know, so clean up what you're emitting in your home environment first place, you know, with your cleaning chemicals, your body care pot products. It's typical for a woman between all the stuff that they put on their skin and in their hair to be exposed to over 500 chemicals. And when you put it on your skin, you know, so, so clean up <laughs> the stuff that's emitting odors in your own home and then go to hard surface if you can. And not everybody can afford, you know, tile or, you know, wood flooring with non-toxic um, stains and, you know, like Rubio oil that doesn't emit, you know, VOCs. Nowadays, you can buy VOC paint, but there's also a special shampoo you can get with a sealer and a lock that literally, if you have brand new carpet, that you know is giving you a headache because of all the chemicals you can seal all that and in a two-day process it's the outgassing is completely taken care of you know there's no air purifier known to man that could keep up with the outgassing of new carpet in a home and i mean not everybody can afford wool carpet because you can buy wool carpet that doesn't have you know emitting of that and then you know, circulation does help. So, you know, go over to your thermostat and cause your circulating fan instead of to come on and off when you either are cooling or heating, have it go continuous. And people are going, oh my gosh, the power. No, it draws very little voltage and you'll have voltage spikes in usage in electrical power when the fan turns on and off more than just consistently. Your, your fan will actually last longer because it's not hammering the windings. And that will really improve along with how many people regularly change their furnace filter. I mean, come on, guys. You know, changing that, you know, now we've got reminders on our smartphones. We've got habit reminders, man. Set a, set a reminder and change your, your furnace filter. And you would be shocked at how much better, you know, that makes your indoor air environment. However, you know, I got tired of all these air purifiers that are noisy, that uh, have to have expensive filters. So I came up with... And, you know, we're sedentary, we're indoors, we have the lower negative ions, we have the lower oxygen levels. So I wanted to, you know, 
come up with something different than everyone else. Cause you can always, there's so many different air purifiers that you can get. And some of them are good and helpful and great, but I came up with something new um, using plasma. Now everybody's familiar maybe with a negative ion generator, you know, but plasma takes it to a next level. It's like the LEX airport uses giant plasma air purifiers to get rid of the toxic jet fumes. Cause if you've gone through their concourses lately, You'll notice that the airport sure smells a lot better. And so plasma is something really important. And so I actually lucid dream when I was on an airplane and saw this little tiny mini uh, device. And I saw other people coughing and hacking and getting sick. And then I was breathing safe. So I described what it looked like to my engineer and we came up with this little device that emits 19,100,000 negative ions and 4,550,000 positive. That's what makes it plasma when it has both negative and positive. So it's like this ionic cloud that's constantly having these reactions. It's like priming the pump. So it's cleaning the air of all kinds of volatile organic compounds and dust particles that are so small that it'll make it through a heap of filter and leaving over a bunch of negative ions. And this little device is capable of running off of a battery pack that you charge your tablet or your phone with. So you can go mobile with this. And that's part of the reason why what I told the engineer is that, that it had to run off of one of those. And so this actually off of a 20,000 milliamp hour battery bank will run 72 hours continuously. I actually put one of these in my hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So I, and, you know, so I'm getting negative ions because hyperbaric strips the air of negative ions. And then I had this family that were asthmatics and they just said, Eileen, I just, sniff above that device and I don't have to use my inhaler. And so I was like, I, I set it off for lab testing, you know, to put it on the floor, measure up to my nose when I'm in the sauna, how many negative ions am I really, with what's left over, am I inhaling? Which turns out to be 56,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter. It takes 30,000 or 20,000 per cubic centimeter in a sauna to cause your sweat volume to double according to European studies. So there's huge benefits to using this in a sauna besides the fact I started thinking about that toxic humidified sauna sweat I was rebreathing. So this, you know, cleans all that up, but I sent it back to the lab because I'm like trying to figure out why is this working for people with sleep apnea or asthma to where they're instantly able to breathe. And, uh, turns out that not, not only is it ionized clean air, it's increasing background oxygen levels 70 to 118%. So all this yoga, breath work, get more oxygen, man, you know, your hack is keep one of these close by, but I have them, you know, all over the house. And as far as pathogens goes in the air, it's pretty good. I mean, but it's only like 48%. I mean, a lot of the air purifiers you get, the reason why they're better at cleaning pathogens out of the air is because of the filtration media that they go through. I mean, that has no filter. You just take a brush and you clean it. So one of my son's college roommates always had these Glade Airwicks plugged in when I'd go visit. And I would just be choking knowing that the chemicals in there are listed on the health human services website is carcinogenic yep. <laughs> and here it's just like everywhere oh yep. my gosh so i used to have this led light that cleaned the air you could hold a cigarette up to it and the smoke would just disappear so i said i don't want an led light even it had a healthy cri rating but people were so are so scared of led lights that they don't look that you can have a healthy CRI rating that's not gonna damage your eyes. But anyway, so I abandoned that and went to the ionic refresher and just put the technology in here without a light. And you can hold a cigarette up to this and the smoke will just disappear. But this little gizmo, when I tested it, cause of these uh, metallic impregnated fibers in this tip, 
kill 89% of pathogens in the air. And I mean, the only maintenance is, you know, wipe it off about once a month. <laughs> That's it. And it's silent. So what I use for my home is I basically bought a 12 pack of these home and plugged them in everywhere around the house. And then I have breeze safes pretty much everywhere. And then I have my furnace fan on continuous and I change my um, filter like once a month. So that's, you know, besides using non-toxic cleaners and laundry, laundry soap oh i'm I, you know putting that up against your skin you know use dryer ball wool dryer balls in the dryer so you're not using the dryer sheets to put all that to absorb in your skin you know we have a lot to think about besides just what we breathe but you know what's on our skin and how we can you know improve our health 100 percent, yeah and that's something that i often talk about with uh you know, water filtration is our showers is so much, so many times we're doing all these great things. We're in taking great water, but then we go into the shower and we're absorbing fluoride, chlorine, all these different chemicals. So, and a lot of people say, you know, it's, it's a lot and it is a lot. It is a lot of little things, but I tell people, you know, start with one step at a time. You know, for me, it's like, all right, instead of wearing synthetic clothing that has all these chemicals, you know, try to get your undershirts with organic cotton or, you know, make one shift at a time and make it sustainable. Cause if you try to upheave everything, one, it's stressful Two, it costs a lot of money. And then you may just say, hey, this is too much. And then you quit. So how can right. we start these little incremental things? And I think a big thing, like you said, is especially for women using a lot of different perfumes and, you know, hair, I don't even know all, all this stuff, hair stuff, and you know, all these different <laughs> chemicals that are going on their bodies. And it's right there, like you said, and then especially, you know, you're breathing that stuff in, it's on you all day, it's absorbing into your skin, absorbing into your hair, absorbing into your nails. So how can we make these little tiny shifts? And that's what it is, is a bunch of tiny shifts. And I think that it can be easy to be overwhelmed by thinking we do everything all at once. So right. I like the fact that you said, like, hey, but start by getting down some fragrances. If you got something plugged in the wall, it's shooting out fragrances. Let's cut that out real quick. Pull <laughs> that out and just throw it in the trash. Um, you know, deodorant is another big one that I think is uh, very overlooked is, you know, using a non-toxic deodorant. You know, aluminum is common in these in these fragrances. And what do we got going on there? We have a whole skincare line, we of do. course. Cool. <laughs> Five star reviews, every single one of them. We started out with deodorant because no matter what natural deodorant my daughter or I used, you still smell. I mean, <laughs> who's got one that works, right? <laughs> it took, I'll tell you, I finally, it took me years because it was the same. I was trying brand after brand um, and I finally just recently got one. So I'm going to have to check out the ones that you have too. Yeah, we have the, and ours are based our ancestral products because we render kidney fat. You know, a cow, I mean, grass fed, we, we can't get enough organic, but we use like our other organic ingredients. But, uh, you know, a cow could have 300 pounds of fat, only maybe 15 to 20 pounds on top of the kidneys in that fascia sac. You know, because you, you know, seen a lot of tallow products online, maybe bought them and you smell like you just cooked a hamburger. <laughs> I mean, how can you like wear that around, right? And so we came up with this process of rendering that takes like about a week. And then um, out of the amount of fat that we buy, only we end up with 25%. So it's a very expensive, long drawn out process and it's hard you know, to source. Uh, we're in with some farms, a group, group of farms, you know, in the Pacific Northwest that are just grazing. Um, they're not giving them any hormones or shots or anything like that. And so we render our tallow, but we have two deodorants, lemon, lime, and fresh. And I mean, 
there hasn't been, there's only in the last five years, only been one person that it didn't work for, but they can, could not have any, any at all baking soda. There's a very minute amount in here. Everyone else has said, well, I can't have baking soda on my skin. I've tried it and haven't had a problem. I've only had one that couldn't. Other than that, like five-star reviews. Then I, you know, cause I'm going to be 60 years old look at my videos from five, 10 years ago and look at me now. I mean, it's because of all the prototyping and developing this natural skincare. We've got toners with dead sea minerals and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, cause I got tired. I was buying uh, from Macy's the, the origins brand, you know, where you get a little tiny thing like this for like $60, you know, uh, and stuff like that. So I developed a, a facial toner that works better, uh, body toners, and then we have lotions. We've got sunscreen, we've got cellulite rejection, we've got balms. But you look at, I even have a review from a person who's a vegan who tried absolutely everything under the sun and had such a horrific skin condition that she was desperate. So she tried one of the products and it fixed her. <laughs> so, you know, yes, they're, they're, they're not, they're not vegan. You know, um, I, I had one person ask me, well, did the cow have to die? And yes, unfortunately, you know, it was slaughtered and we used the kidney fat, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, oil soluble um, vitamins and everything like that. If you ever just accidentally get some butter on your skin, you notice how it just kind of absorbs in there. This just goes into the deeper layers and rejuvenates. And we put some pretty darn expensive uh, ingredients in these. Uh, but yeah, that, that reduce all kinds of stuff. So I would just encourage people and they smell nice. We don't like overpower the formulas with essential oils. Mm -hmm. The essential oils that we choose are for healing and rejuvenating purposes. And a lot of the aroma comes from the organic oils that we put in there, but you'll, you'll find that you smell this stuff and your just body just craves it mm -hmm. because it's got natural healing properties. So we're developing um, several other products. Like I actually use the anti-cellulite cream on a Q-tip and I put it around my eyes if there's any puffiness and it kind of shrinks it back. Mm -hmm. So we're working on a, a cream, you know, an anti-aging cream for the eyes and using some peptides because I'm doing a lot of research on peptides. There's wonderful things that help the body rejuvenate with that. And then we're going to come out with an acne cream. We do have a lot of ingredients in the healing lotion that work for acne, you know, rosacea, uh, psoriasis, you know, a whole bunch of things like that. And they're all low PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acids. We now know that a lot of our problems are these seed oils. Yes. So we, you know, they say that if you're a 10 PUFA or less, you know, that's okay. So, I mean, I think our highest one is like six, you know, some, you know, so we have considered that and almost all the ingredients are organic and they actually work. So, like I said, the five-star reviews tell the story. Yeah. You mentioned the seed oils there and that's a Big, big gripe of mine that I'm always talking about people. I put out a couple of posts recently about that. And, um, you know, like five alternatives to co or, uh, canola oil was a popular one. And then also, too, there was um, some studies I was seeing that basically were saying that people that consume the standard American diet and a lot of that being tracked towards seed oil consumption get have a much higher risk of skin cancer sunburns all these other type of negative side effects from the sun and here we are blaming the sun but when people stop consuming these seed oils the sun is giving life to every single thing on this planet and so it's always fascinating to me to see these type of studies that you know i've found for me as somebody you know pretty light-skinned dude 
most of my life, I get pretty burned. And as my nutrition has improved, I don't really get burned that often. And I think part of that is also, you know, I'm more mindful of not just laying out in the sun for four hours straight and not taking any sort of break, but between hydrating better, between higher quality nutrition, sometimes I'll use a little bit of coconut oil. And it's, I haven't really had any issues with burning, but it, I think it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, topic to dive into those seed oils. And um, you also mentioned the, you know, about the the vegan pushback that I think that there's, you know, obviously this big movement right now. And my background is in sustainable food and farming for my undergrad. And there's this really big misconception that animals, especially cows, are the worst thing to ever walk this oh planet. When gosh. in fact, it's just about the complete opposite, that they're really sequestering carbon in the soil. And if we can utilize so you saw the TED talk on that, that is phenomenal where they killed all the elephants and then they bring in cattle and they, it just completely redid the land because it's sequestering carbon. There, it's, you know, it's amazing. And I think that it, it's, it's this, um, you know, I don't want to get conspiratorial, but I think there's a lot of plant-based companies out there that are pr- pushing some science that is definitely in their favor as opposed, as opposed to saying, Hey, maybe the cows use in a sustainable manner. You know, we're looking at the studies from, you know, like feedlots. And obviously right, they, if right. you're using data from an unsustainable model, yeah, you're going to show results to show it's right. not good. But if you use a sustainable farm, that's a whole different story. And so what I also like about what you're saying about using this, this kidney fat is that most people when they're consuming animal products are just using the major muscle areas. They're not going into these little areas. And that's for me, I'm a big fan of organ meats. I think, you oh, know, yeah, li- yeah, liver absolutely. is one of the most nutrient dense foods on the yes. planet. And so for me, it's like, all right, so yeah, maybe having an animal just using major parts isn't the most sustainable, but if we use all the different pieces of the animal, that's what has been done ancestrally for since nose the to of time. tail, nose to tail. <laughs> exactly. And, um, I watched this, uh, hunting show. I, it's called meat eater. It's actually a really good show on, uh, on netflix and this guy he goes out and hunts and like he's you know talking about how you can eat like the fat behind the eyeballs and like all these like little random things that you never really think of as an <laughs> average person but there's so many incredible benefits when we do use that nose to tail model right well another comment i think uh that's tied to skin cancer is the use of sunglasses Yes, because of right, blocking go off. Go off the on hormone. This one. <laughs> and you know, with being light skinned, you know, if you get out, well, the Calvins in the sunlight are low in the morning, you can like develop what you call a, a skin callus mm-hmm. towards not burning as much. But if you do have to be out in the sun, we have a completely non toxic skincare, I mean, uh, sunscreen. A little dabble do you. Oh my gosh. And it's an SPF 35. So, Mm. you know, we've tried to come up with healthy alternatives, you know, for that. I love it. Yeah. You know, the sun, the uh, sunglasses is a big one too. I stopped wearing (laughs) sunglasses probably four or five years ago. So I've never seen a post on Instagram. One of my uh, mentors is talking about you know, stop using sunglasses. It's, you know, terrible for your eyes, your circadian rhythm, your skin, oh, all yeah. these different things. And all your hormones. Yep. And, I mean, yep. we've just, we've just have the 21st century disease. We're indoors. Right. We're not getting the sun. We're not getting the grounding. We're not breathing what we should. We're putting all this stuff on our bodies. I mean, you know, it, it's just amazing how much someone could feel better just by getting out, watching the sunrise barefoot yep. in the morning for a month yep. their sleep will improve like so much <laughs> it's amazing well, well, i'll tell you i mean it's funny when i'm working with clients you know doing one-on-one coaching and some of my first suggestions all right when you wake up go for a little barefoot walk to your backyard you know sit in the sun for five minutes and it's like little things that as a, when they come to me as a health coach they're not expecting they're expecting nutrition and you know exercise you know, let's, how much but, money do i have to buy this right. <laughs> to yeah. do that there's there's like so much you can do for free right and that's what you know that's what i think is i always recommend let's there's so many great gadgets out there you know i'm a big fan of using you know, supplements in a proper way. I'm a big fan of using things like air filters and all these things we've talked about. But what if you just started by going outside, breathing fresh air, getting in the sun, going for a walk, 
free things. And then the other things are the icing on the cake. But if you're not keeping your basics down pat, you can buy the fanciest gadgets in the world. And yeah, you may see some results, but you're not going to be optimized. You got to balance the gadgets with the basics. I think that's a big right. thing that I'm a big proponent of in this, you know, biohacking has become such a, you know, I don't even know how big of an industry it's going to become in 10 years, probably billion, many billion dollar industry, but those are all great, but let's balance that with returning to our roots. You know, what were our ancestors doing? And obviously now we've learned more than them. You know, they were, their life expectancy was like 40 years old and we're yeah. a little bit beyond that. So it's find what worked and also find what's working with our technology and find that middle ground where we can now blend the two together. And I think that's what I find so fascinating about, you know, the things that you've shared with your technology, your products, you know, a lot of things that I'm often talking about is it's, it's a blend of the two. It's not all, I think that tends to be, we love to be one side or the other in our society nowadays. It's like, you're either this side or that side. It's like, what about something in the middle? Cause I think there's a little <laughs> bit of good on both sides. I'm, one of the things I'm a gadget woman, you know, and, and so I buy and try so many things and, you know, if it's not easy to use, where does all that stuff go in your garage right. or the next yard sale and yep. you don't even use it. So one of the things of my <coughs> company that I've tried to do is to design products that are easy to use to put in your lifestyle that give kind of like an immediate payback, meaning the person feels better. I mean, they're encouraged to do more. I mean, I, I always say that if, you know, somebody asked me, I'm only going to do one thing for my health. What do I do? I'd say do a daily coffee enema. And then I give them my reasons why. And, you know, of course, I am a proponent of doing near infrared saunas and drinking ozonated water, you know, obviously going outside doing the, the free things. Uh, but, you know, doing stuff that helps me and, and one of my passions, um, I've got 10 patents and five of them relates to your structure, you know, your, your posture. Um, it's huge. People don't realize how much energy their body consumes just holding yourself upright in gravity. And every time somebody has a tight muscle, it's just, it's horrible that you see people reaching for, you know, anti-inflammatories, you know, muscle relaxers, or even, you know, uh, I think it's better using the CBD and the, the THC for the pain, but I want to get at the root right. and bottom line our spine is a mechanical device, kind of like a crankshaft in a motor. If you have a bent crankshaft, man, that motor's going to seize up, things are going to wear, you know, and all these tight muscles and everything like that is an emergency protective mechanism so your body doesn't drift further. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this. I mean, I was born and the doctor grabbed me and twisted me, yanking me out with forceps. And of course, my parents didn't know to take me to a chiropractor then, and, and my body was twisted, and I had to wear special shoes. And every time I walked, my right knee jammed into my left knee. I mean, I just, I just physically wasn't very good at, you know, running, jumping, anything like that. And then I grew nine inches in three months. If you can just imagine the horrific pain. And then I got ran over by a car in a parking lot. I mean, every single breath was like a dagger to my heart. And then I uh, became acquainted with the chiropractor who thought that we needed to have an ideal shape and gravity. So his training, his treatment, everything was to give you back the shape that you either didn't acquire or you lost. Mm. And he ended up uh, working with the New England Patriots and the U.S. Olympic team and had a whole team of people and developed equipment. And then he passed away. Uh, and so I've improved his equipment. And, you know, there's basically four simple things people can do uh, to get that shape of the spine, you know, which 
you can't change the muscle attachment points on bone. So these tight muscles and the ligaments and the damage to your fascia and all of that, we're not exercising, inducing curvature and improving the multificent interspinalis, you know? So we have these vertebrae that if we have the right shape, the sheer forces of gravity will lock our bone on bone, the back, those facet bones. That, you're not gonna have a dislocation. And, and so there's a whole new product line. So far, we've got 34 products and there's more, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five more products. So we're gonna have a whole spinal fitness line to address these issues. And we're working with uh, basically professional athletes who are seeing tremendous results that they don't get anywhere else. So it's gonna help increase athletic ability, uh, minimize injuries and speed recovery. Mm, love but, it. Yeah. Well, you know, like you're saying is that, you know, the, the force of gravity is holding life together, but also if you got a forward head posture, even just by a couple inches, that's a lot of pressure on the back of your neck. And even me sitting at a computer, that slight hunch, even after like now I'm more aware of it. So after like 30 minutes, it's like, oh man, like I can't imagine doing that before. And then, you know, I tell people like, Hey, if you, if you work a desk job, which a lot of people do, Hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life, but if that's the, the career you've chosen, get up and move your body at least every hour. You know, I, I would say preferably a little bit more, but if you can get up at least once an hour and just to walk to the bathroom and back, reset your spine, like stand up straight. I like to lay on the floor, like a hard surface, lay down flat, you know, do a little stretching, like get the body back into alignment because when we're out of alignment with our bone structure, our muscular structure, everything else is going to suffer. Our breath is going to be stifled. We're going to be breathing more shallowly, probably into the chest, activating the sympathetic nervous system, stimulating inflammation. You know, the list goes on and on. And so then it comes down to, again, returning to our roots. How can we just get back to our basic healthy posture? And I think that that for a lot of people is, is moving more, doing more things like walking, doing more things like stretching and actually being mindful of their, of their little postures. And if you're having your hand up here, when you're typing with your mouse, bring the mouse down lower. And like we're seeing with the, the household things earlier, it's a lot of little things. If you're, right. if you're looking down at computer, raise it up a little bit, have it a little bit higher, little things. And that can make the world of a difference. And then I know I want to kind of dive into your, your tools you got going on. Cause I'm a big fan of foam rollers. I'm a big fan of, you know, massage guns. And like you're saying, all these little gadgets that little cross balls, golf balls that we can just use to kind of reset that musculature. But I um, would like to just kind of close up here with all the tools you have for spinal support and um, where people can learn more about all this stuff. Yeah. Well, we have the neck shaper. There's a neck flexion exercise that you can do. And because of all of our electronic devices, I wanted to start with the neck because a lot of pain going through your arms and even your low back curve are affected by your neck. And a lot of people do stretching because of tight muscles. But unless you have force, on top of your body, that's called anterior force, with posterior support, like a train has a train track, okay? So if you want your bones to be in a certain way, you have your posterior support guiding, you know, a lot of these foam rollers out there, they crunch the spinous and the transverse process. It doesn't stretch the joint. A lot of times it's painful. I mean, heck, there's that chirp roll. People are falling off of that thing and injuring themselves. And, you know, foam rollers are great for releasing fascia and, you know, tight muscles. But what about inducing the curvature? That type of behavior does not induce curvature. So with the, the neck shaper, you're able to put that 
force, the anterior force, and with the rolls, the posterior support with the groove because it lets the spinous float. And then the edges of your vertebrae are called transverse process. And so you'll literally be adjusting your back while you're using you know, this equipment and it's stretching the joint. I mean, you have hundreds of joints in your spine. And like you said, the muscles are suffering, the range of motion, all these things. But what people don't realize is that through your brain and your spinal cord, through every joint where the nerves go out to supply, you know, impulses to the organs. So when you have these pinched organs, you're going to have less organ function. And so when you use the rolls, then you're able to stretch that. It releases nerve impulses. But one of the things we teach is to do the back twist, you know, to sit up straight and lead and rotate because your, your discs are like a sponge. What we want to do with this rotation is we want to change the state to a jelly. Then you use these different rolls. You know, we have five different diameters, three different densities of each. So it depends on how flat your back is or how injured you are, or how athletic you are. We have the sizing kits. You can determine the right size. Then you put one in your low back and one behind your neck and you lay down on the ground. Like you talk about laying down flat. Well, what this does then you lay there for 20 minutes. And so now gravity, all those tight muscles relax, literally you're here, your bones moving. And then your discs turn back to the sponge state and you can roll off, get up. And it's like encouraged your spine to use that curvature. It begins to train you. And because of the five different diameters and three different densities, and some of the other exercises that we teach, which are all in PDF free guides that they can go like spinalfitness.com, it forwards it to the website and you can get all that for free and utilize that to reduce pain. I mean, there was one kid who uh, had a trampoline accident and he'd been through physical therapy and he was having seizures. And I had these prototype <laughs> ugly duckling, you know, cushions. I mean, they were like really bad. These are, these are the finished nice product. And, you know, I taught him how to do the back twist and lay down. And a month later, his dad came back and said, he's never had a seizure since. And that kid carries those rolls with him everywhere and uses wow. them faithfully every day. And I mean, it's just amazing. And, and right now we have uh, the power cushion, the molds are being cut right now with the integrated neck shaper. That's what the New England Patriots have mm. their players, you know, on. And that's how they can do the pelvic tilt and a real sit up where you're arching over so that you're strengthening the multifidus and the inner spinalis muscles and inducing the curvature because, you know, football players that have that big low back, they're the ones that are the best. Mm. They can run faster, jump higher, hit stronger. And so, you know, we've got these proven exercises and the equipment to be able to give you the curvature. And that's, you look at every Olympic athlete, you just see they have that big low back curve and they have that curve and they just have this natural stance. It's, it's a reminder to stand up straight isn't going to give you the opposing force to induce curvature. So that's why we need the exercises. There's a pelvic tilt, a setup, and the neck flexion, and then there's the twist to lay over the cushions. But all of our products are on Creatrix solutions.com and you know it's kind of like a shopping mall for health you know everything from what you breathe to what you drink to what you put on your skin and then even if we lived in a bubble <laughs> we're still going to accumulate toxins and so we have the near infrared sauna fix line where you can do hot yoga at home um 
You can drink ozonated water to get the miracle of more oxygen in your body. There's just, you know, just everything. And we're constantly coming up with things to maximize your energy and your health. Beautiful. Are you on social media? Yes. Instagram, we're under uh, Creatrix Solutions. Beautiful. And so, you know, for those listening right now is I will put all those links in the description box as well. So you can check out the website, check out the social media. Um, but Eileen, this has been a lot of fun. I definitely had some uh, good questions answered and I learned a, a lot of good things. So I'm excited for people to be tuned into this and follow along with all the cool stuff you're doing. So I appreciate you being here today. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And everybody listening, have an amazing day and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. My awesome guest, Eileen Durfee. So like I mentioned, you can check out all the links to follow along with her and her business in the description box below. And what I'd really love for you to do and really appreciate you doing is to check out my YouTube channel. That's going to be a huge intention of mine in terms of my attention and intentions this year of 2022. Putting up content every single week. The podcast is in video form. If you're not watching this already on YouTube, dropping every Monday at 10 a.m. where every podcast drops first. And also I'm putting up other content that is not seen on any other platform every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So check out the YouTube channel, subscribe on there. We'd love to hear your feedback on any of the, the posts that you see up there already and the videos. And I'd love to hear your feedback on them. And now I also want to share with you today one of my favorite ways to make better health easy. And so I know for a lot of us, we're constantly on the go. We're constantly looking for ways to improve our health, improve our nutrition. We know that we could be eating better, but sometimes convenience is just such a really polarizing factor that we need to take that into consideration. And that's why I love the Appleberry Power Shake by Perium. It's an all organic product, greens powder, and basically it's dried at room temperature. So it's not killing the live enzymes like it does when you heat things. When you dry things with heat, that's going to kill the enzymes in there. So when you actually mix it with water, it rehydrates the cells and you actually get the live enzymes for, I believe it's about seven or so minutes, seven to nine minutes. So that's a great way to get some live fuel into your body. And basically I look at it like a whole food multivitamin. And so getting your whole food multivitamin in there is a great way to balance yourself out, get yourself that support you need, and still have the convenience factor. Because all you need to have is a little spoon, your power shake, and some water, mix it up, and it tastes delicious. And I'll tell you, everybody I talk to, they've tried a lot of different greens. They all say this one's the best. I've had, I think, two people over the past three years I've been using this, almost three years I've used this, only two people in almost three years that have not liked the taste. So I believe you will enjoy this as well. And you can go to ishopperium.com and use the discount code WHOLEHEALTH and that will save you $50 off your first order on your Purium purchase. I will put that link in the description box as well. You can also go to bit.ly slash forward slash that is all caps Purium Greens and that will bring you to the page as well. So thank you for listening to this episode. I'd love for you to check out some of those things that I share with you, the YouTube page and the Power Shake that helps me keep it going and keep it growing. So let's make this the best year ever. I appreciate you and we'll see you soon.